Hi, everyone. I'm Professor Gassini. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the Fall 2020 offering of CSE 842. For those of you that are new graduate students, I'd like to once again welcome you to East Lansing. And those of you that are away from the summer, welcome back. CSE 842 is a graduate level class on natural language processing. Our goal for this component of the lecture is to go over the syllabus together. More specifically, I'll be introducing you to the course, helping you understand what we'll be discussing for the remainder of the semester, how the assignments will be structured, how you'll submit those assignments, and so on. One important thing that I'd like to note here is that as of this semester, this course is being taught asynchronously, which means that all the lectures, tutorials, assignments, etc., will all be posted online at the start of each week for you to consume at your leisure. So to begin, I'd like to provide a quick overview for what we'll be covering and when we'll be covering it for the rest of the semester. The way we'll be approaching NLP is in four quarters. Um, the quarters represent one month out of the semester. And if you turn your attention to the left-hand side of the screen here for a minute, you'll see that in the first quarter, which runs from 9-2 to 9-27, we're going to be discussing topics related to text representation and classification. You'll also see here that I've broken out for each of the weeks um, the homework assignment that will be attached, what the content of the lectures will be, and any information that's related to when you should start your project and when you'll need to deliver your project. Moving into subsequent weeks, if you now turn your attention to the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see natural language understanding. This will include parts of speech tagging, sequence processing, RNNs. We'll also be looking at encoder-decoder models, attention, contextual embeddings, and several other topics, which we will, of course, touch on in the course of this semester. In the second half of the semester, the remaining two quarters will be a discussion of discourse and dialogue systems, and then speech processing. CSE A42 is an overview of NLP techniques and research areas. And the goal is to provide you as a graduate student with tools and knowledge needed to perform your own research in natural language processing. So as I mentioned, this course will cover four general topic areas. The first topic area is about text representation and classification. This section of the course will be about how do you pre-process and represent text for use by classification models. So for example, the kinds of things we'll be doing in this first quarter of the semester is looking at sentences like the example I have there on the right-hand side, every day is a new day, and figuring out how we take that string of words and cast it as a numerical representation. For instance, the count of um, the distinct words within the sentence. We'll also be looking at operations that we can perform, simple kind of pre-processing approaches that help us transform the text so that it's useful for a broader variety of cases. For example, eliminating capitalization when it's unnecessary and words that don't contribute much to the meaning of the sentence so that we can use this ultimately for the purposes of a classification task. Natural language understanding has to do with how to extract structure from text, represent knowledge, and perform reasoning. So consider, for example, the following sentence on the right, Jim's pants are blue, Jim wears a hat, all hats are red. Well, we'd like to be able to take a sentence like this and perform some thinking about it. We might want to know that um, there's a subject, for example, in this sentence, that subject is Jim, and that Jim has some properties, such as Jim has pants and Jim has a hat. And we might want to be able to assign certain sub-properties to each of those properties, such as the fact that the pants are the color blue and that the hat is the color red. Now, there's, as you might see from this particular example, some first order of reasoning that's taking place here because we said that Jim wears a hat and said separately that all hats are red which implies that Jim's hat is also red. So we'll be speaking about this kind of process, natural language understanding, and the methods that are used to perform this in the second quarter of the semester. 
In the third quarter of this semester, we'll be speaking about discourse and dialogue systems. So this is how to build systems that understand and interact with human agents. For example, let's say we have the string uh, that comes from a chat system or a text message between people. I'm feeling social, what should I do? No, no, wait, I think I wanna stay home. And let's say we wanna do something useful with that information like determine if the person is actually feeling social or they're feeling reclusive. And on the basis of that, give a suggestion about what sorts of activities the person should do. So this kind of problem is within the domain of discourse and dialogue systems. That's what we'll be covering in the third quarter of the semester. So in the fourth quarter of this semester, we'll be speaking about speech and language systems. Specifically, we're gonna have a discussion about how you build systems that represent human speech. Um, we might want to, for example, figure out how in the presence of noisy or odd forms of speech, such as the Laurel uh, Yanni example, which is uh, kind of a famous one, how do you take these spectrographic information or auditory waveforms and transcribe them into some kind of uh, text format that you can use for the purposes of displaying to a user, answering a query, and so on and so forth. So the way this course will be structured is roughly half theoretical lectures. So I'll be presenting slide decks like this. And then the other half will be hands-on tutorials where I'll be taking you through IPython Notebooks Live. There's about two and a half hours of content per week. Half of the content is going to be lectures and the other half is going to be tutorials. And we're structuring the course this way because we'd like to help you obtain both theoretical mastery as well as applied skills by the time you've completed the course. So as a way of uh, giving you an example of what I mean by theory, um, one of the things we're going to discuss later in the course, but I'll also mention here is the idea of an n-gram. This is a common term that we use in natural language processing. Well, all an n-gram is is a contiguous sequence of n items from a given sample of text or speech. And these items can be phenomes, symbols, letters, words, etc. So, for example, the first two words in that sentence are a bigram. The next two words over couplet are, are also a bigram, and so on and so forth. But bigrams or trigrams could also be in the letter space. It could be the first three characters of the string that I have here on the left-hand side of the slide. Um, and then it could be the next three characters in that string and so on and so forth. And these, these grams are ways that we sometimes group language or words or characters to come up with what the individual features will be when we want to represent language for later processing. So when I say that we'll be doing theoretical components to this lecture, I'll be taking you through things like this. Okay, so as I mentioned a little earlier, this course will also have a practical component to it. That practical component will be embedded within IPython notebooks that will be shared in the course's GitLab repository, which you should all have access to. Um, I will step you through, actually as part of this first lecture, how to obtain access to that repository, how to navigate it, how to pull from it, and so on and so forth. But those tutorials are gonna contain, as you can see here on the screen, uh, real practical examples of how you do NLP analysis in the Python programming language in this case, such as how to tokenize text, how to compute bigrams, and so on and so forth. So this course is homework and project based, so there are no exams. The homework is worth 70% of your grade and there's 14 graded homeworks in total. There's actually 15 homeworks, but homework zero, which is going to be due by the end of this week, is not for any kind of credit. It's just an assignment that you do to acclimate to the course and understand how to submit GitLab issues and uh, interact with the materials. In general, the homeworks are gonna be released every Monday and they're going to be due the following Sunday before midnight. As I mentioned, each of these assignments is going to be worth 5% of your grade for a total of 70%. There are four 
project components, and they're each going to be released in roughly monthly intervals. Each of these project components is worth 5% of your total grade. And then the last 10% of your grade is from the final report. This is a summary of um, what you found in your project written as an academic paper. And ideally, you should be able to take your final report and submit it to a scientific conference or venue within the field of natural language processing. We'll speak a little bit more about this uh, final report about halfway through the semester. So quickly about our grading policy and scale. I'm showing there on the left-hand side of the screen the percentages of your grade and what that is going to translate to on MSU's grade point scale. In the unlikely event that there's an error in grading your assignments, you have 48 hours to request a regrade. If you make a request after that time, I unfortunately will not be able to consider it. So please contact me early. I expect that all of your assignments, whether they're homeworks or projects and the final report, uh, are going to be submitted as IPython notebooks to a GitLab repository. And the reason we're using a GitLab repository for this class is because that is a de facto tool for computer science, uh, not only within the scientific community, but also in industry. So it's good for you to get used to using tools like that. And it also has several interesting and useful features, like it can track submission times, automatically check for plagiarism, et cetera. So these notebooks that you submit through the GitLab repository need to contain functioning code with the outputs in line, as well as markdown sections that clearly demarcate what your code does and an interpretation of the results. That is, I want to be able to read these IPython notebooks that you submit like I would read an article, for instance. Any late assignments are not going to be accepted unless I've granted you prior written permission, and you have to have obtained that permission 48 hours in advance of the deadline. So uh, you, if you contact me the day before a homework is due, asking for an extension, I will not be able to consider that request unless there was a verifiable medical emergency of some kind. Any assignments that are incomplete will receive a zero grade. Please don't engage in academic dishonesty. It will result in a failing grade in this course. And of course, if you uh, have special needs, we're happy to accommodate those needs. Okay, as I mentioned on the previous slide, all the materials, questions, submissions are based in the GitLab page. So you can visit gitlab.msu.edu slash csea42-fall-2020 and you will see a Git repository that contains all the materials you'll need for the class. If you don't have access to this course Git repository, please contact me immediately you should, by the time this video uh, is being viewed, all have been invited to the class's repository. If you have questions about content, you're more than welcome to submit questions um, as issues in GitLab. And uh, that will just make it easy for me to kind of keep track of your questions you're also welcome to email me for either office hours or with um, questions that you're having about the course content. The only thing I would ask is that you please structure your email carefully and be specific about problems that you're having. This will help me answer um, any questions that you have, hopefully over email. And if not, we need to get on a phone call and have a, or a Zoom call and have a one-on-one. -on -one. We can do that as well. So here's some of the things I'd like to, to ask that you do on the left-hand side when you reach out to me. Please include CSE 842 in the title. Please describe the problem and what specifically you'd like help with. And please include at least three options that work well for you to meet during res regular business hours if you do want to schedule a time to chat. And I'd like to ask that if you reach out, uh, you avoid using vague subjects. Um, being vague about what you're struggling with or forgetting to include times when we can connect because it will be harder for me to prepare to help you when we meet if um, what you're struggling with is not very specific. Okay, so this first week 
covers an overview of the course and how to get started. You can see here that there is a homework zero, but this homework zero is nothing really substantive. It's just about setting up your notebook and GitLab repo so that you can use that information for the remainder of the semester when you're turning in your assignments. I should also note here that um, the project one is actually available. I will be going through the project one requirements a little bit later in a separate video. But at a high level here, you just need to know that project one is about collecting a natural language processing data set and kind of writing an introduction or scoping out a question that you'd like to answer using that NLP data set that you will be collecting. 